Hi, welcome to Pixel Get, the video game talk show. I'm Ash Bowman, joined by Derek, Peter, and Matt. And today we're going to talk about the year of 2015. So guys, what was your favorite game of 2015? At this second, it's probably Halo 5, but that's just because it's the only thing I, it's the only game I'm thinking about right now as we shoot this. Contact. When I say Halo 5, I don't mean the campaign. I just mean the, the multiplayer. The campaign has, uh, like, it leaves a lot to be desired, but... Uh, but where's the split, split screen? We don't talk about that's that. That's not a good game. That's we don't talk about that, Matt. I have an internet connection and I have friends. Do you have local friends? No. No. So that makes well, sense. he can play with his internet girlfriend now, so that's Exactly, cool. so you're set. Obvious answer, Bloodborne. Oh, yes, Bloodborne. Yes, absolutely. My favorite thing in all of video games is when a game mechanic ties into the game story. So when you go to something like Bloodborne where you have a mechanic like Rally, it incentivizes you to be aggressive, to attack as fast as possible, which is amazing when that ties in with the fact that, okay, you take too much blood, you become a beast, you go crazy, you get blood yeah. drunk. So as I'm playing it, I feel like I'm getting blood drunk. Like I'm going nuts, just going, I need more blood. It sounds like a serious problem. It's, it is a problem, yeah. and that's my favorite thing about it. People will say straight off the bat that dark, it's too much like Dark Souls or Demon yeah. Souls or anything like that, but I feel like they completely took the framework of the game, made something entirely different. Not just from like the mechanics, they invented a completely different world with it as well, like drawing from like Lovecraftian like lore and things like that. I thought it, altogether it's probably one of the strongest games they've come out with. Yeah. And anytime yeah. you can experience H.P. Lovecraft stuff without having to deal with the horrible, disgusting racism of his books, <laughs> always a treat, always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with Life is Strange, actually. That game came out of, like, nowhere. That's cute. Square. <laughs> hey, it is a cute game. It's really cute. Like, it's like a, it's on the vein of, like, Telltale type games, but, like, I think it's just, like, done 10 times better than. Absolutely. Telltale. So, what do you want? You don't know who the fuck I am. What are you doing? I remember thinking, like, like as I was playing it, it's like, wow, I am so immersed in yeah. the story of this, like, teenage girl. And I have no idea why. Max Caulfield, who would have thought she would have became the most like lovable character in gaming? Like, like I was enthralled. That's a very bold claim. Oh, I'm going there. Move over, Mario. Max Caulfield's here. <laughs> it's great. I um, almost did not get past the dialogue. Oh man, they have those sweet ultrasonic lenses. And look at that vintage rangefinder. What? Like, it was so obviously a French studio trying to sound Don't like an American understand. teenage girl, yeah. but it got to me. Like, I, I, it really accessed my inner teenage girl. Where am I? What's happening? For me, like, my favorite game of the year, it's very obvious what I'm going to say here, Metal Gear Solid V. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Like, You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. We've gone over this in, the, in our previous episode, but I love that game so much. I know that it, it's not as strong storyline-wise as any of the other Metal Gear Solid games, but the gameplay itself is so addictive. I can't think of any other Metal Gear Solid game that I put in, like 100 hours into, like easily, and, and still wanted to keep playing. I can't get away from this game. And like with everything that's happened between uh, Ko uh, Kojima and Konami, like I just, this game needs more justice as well. Like something has to be settled with it. I think it's definitely the most controversial game of, of course, the year. Of course, yeah. Like, it's like one of the biggest talking points of the year. Yeah, it's not just sure. the game itself; is the controversy that's come out of it. Now go, and let the legend come back to life. I think uh, it's been a pretty strong year for indie games as well. For sure. Yes. Like one that comes to my mind, and I think you'll agree with me on this, is Undertale. Absolutely. Oh, I. Uh, I may slowly be turning into Jim Sterling, but I think Undertale is almost the perfect game. My deal is I like games that, instead of just being kind of consistently good, that are just strong overall, I like games that are wildly exceptional. And one thing we have to talk about is the music is The music stellar. is so good, that's what I mean. Like there's two things that are better than any other game that's come out in years. One's the music, and two is the writing.
I know you kind of cringe at some of it, mm. and I agree with the anime What's related What's the worst stuff? line of dialogue from the game? Okay, how about we just say that there's a character that's called Sundare Plane. Is it, is it Sundare or is it Sundare? Uh, okay. <laughs> a little accent there. I'm sorry, I uh, need to go back to anime school. <laughs> go back to anime school. The story really did drag me in towards the end, and like the way the game it reinvented itself just it kind of blew me away. But I will not say it's a perfect game. I completely disagree with that. Did you hear that? It got even cold-hearted Ash Bowman to like it. Thanks for watching the episode, but the conversation is not over, so click over here if you want to see the next part, and as always, like and subscribe if you want to see more content.